The war in the Middle East is having very real impacts on safety and security at Jewish and Muslim places of worship in Colorado. Here's Marshall Zellinger. A sanctuary. It can be a place for reflection. Houses of worship should be free and open spaces. A sanctuary can be a place of refuge and protection. For Jews and other religious minorities, um, going to our houses of worship is not something that we can take for granted from a safety standpoint. At the Hebrew Educational Alliance in Southeast Denver, Rabbi Solomon Gruenwald empowers his congregation with information not seen in many places deemed a sanctuary. So we have these, these informational cards and they have two sides to them. One side is welcoming about the synagogue being inclusive and diverse with all gender restrooms and gender pronoun pins. The other side of this card has some basic advice that we got from uh, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies about some steps that people can take in the event of a of violence breaking out at the synagogue. Tucked inside the prayer books are laminated cards describing how a congregant can run, hide, and fight in the event of a violent threat. And then it explains how to stop the bleed. Yeah, nobody wants to come to a synagogue or to their house of worship and think about the possibility that they would be um, putting a tourniquet on somebody whose arm has been blown off. It saddens and, and frankly it angers me that I have to spend time as a rabbi on safety and security. But at each service, the rabbi draws brief attention to the card that draws your attention. It's a good time to check out those blue cards in the um, in the pews to review our safety guidelines. When people are empowered with information, they can be part of the solution. Security at the mosque has really never changed. Prayer service at the mosque off Parker Road in Arapahoe County does not have the same safety and security cards in your face, but safety and security are always front and center. We've always maintained a sense of needing to keep our congregation safe. We have a 40-year relationship with uh, the sheriff's department and we have made sure that they have a constant presence here at the mosque, especially on Fridays and uh, holidays. Democratic State Representative Iman Judah is in a position to help Muslims pray in a space that can remain a sanctuary. Last year, she co-sponsored a bill that allowed places like mosques to apply for grant money to enhance security measures. The money is set aside for nonprofits that are at risk of a terrorist attack. It was a great bill that increased security for houses of worship. We want to make sure that this place remains uh, a sanctity and a sanctuary for all Muslims. That grant program offers up to $50,000 to places of worship and other nonprofits for security enhancements, training, even contracting outside security. It has a total of $500,000 set aside. So if everybody got the max, it's just 10 places that could get the money. Yeah, and you spend all that money with the hope that it, it's never actually going to be needed. But we have seen in Colorado's history, especially with Christian churches, which we did just discuss there, that they can be targets. Like New Life Church, I was working in Colorado Springs when New Life Church happened, and that you had armed security at that place. But what, what um, look at the 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 pamphlet at the synagogue is probably the least expensive thing you could have, and it sure. might be the most helpful in terms of educating. Sure, absolutely, Marshall. Thank you.